this series of SNAP Circuits videos, we're going to start looking at projects for the SC500 system going from projects 306 all the way to 511. And the one that we're going to start with is Project 306, the AM radio, and we're going to go to Project 316, the FM radio. So, starting with the AM radio, there it is in our book. And there it is on the board. And I don't quite understand why Snap Circus put that AM radio project as the first thing in that book because that's something that could be done back in the SC300 set. That's just kind of my gripe. But anyway, we have a single IC AM radio because we're just using our P and P transistor this time. Still the same setup with our high frequency IC variable capacitor and inductor antenna for adjusting the signal and capturing it along with our capacitors for filtering and our resistors for power dissipation. And of course our speaker is our output because we're using 6 volts. So I turn it on here and our slider for our variable resistor here controlling the base of our PNP transistor of course adjusts how much power goes to our speaker which in turn gives us volume or amplitude and Without the power amplifier IC, this circuit is actually pretty quiet. So you kind of bring it up to the camera there because that's max volume with no signal. And unfortunately, I can't really show this AM radio really picking up a station because I've tried it a few times already and I've either got too much interference or this little antenna that they have in the set just doesn't have enough gain to really pick up anything but that's the another AM radio circuit so now we're going to look at project 307 which is the adjustable volume FM radio so here we're looking at project 307 the adjustable volume FM radio and there it is in our book and here it is on the board and here we're making use of our FM radio integrated circuit. There's a little antenna whip. And then it feeds through our variable resistor into the input of our power amplifier, which then goes out to our speaker. So we can adjust the amplitude or volume from our FM module here into the power amplifier. That way we control our volume. And because it's running the power amplifier, it will be louder than if we just ran it directly through the resistor without the amplifier IC there. So, turn it on. And right now it's just got static because the FM module has been reset. And of course this controls our volume. And I will say that depending on what station I find the audio may be muted momentarily because again of YouTube's algorithm if we come across a music station playing music so I'll try to look for something in a commercial break or a talk radio station so here we go Now we press the T button because the T button scans up through the frequency range. Unless we're getting a lot of interference with the whip there. Let me go over here and start over. Of course, I was getting a station before. Why am I not getting one? There we go. We're getting sort of getting an FM station there if I can get interference out of the way of it. There. That's a station in a commercial right now. That's probably 
Christian radio station. So anyway, that shows how Project 307 works. Now we're going to move on to Project 308 through 311, which is the playback and record, where we're going to start working with our recording IC. So here we're looking at Project 308, which is the playback and record. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. And in this project, we're making use of our recording IC. And that serves multiple functions. For one, it takes input from a source, which is our microphone. And then it stores that in a RAM chip or read-only memory. So it is volatile memory. So as long as it's getting power, it will save our recording in there. If we take power away, our recording goes away. You should also keep in mind that it's always drawing a little bit of power when it's set up like this. It also has two controls. Our slide switch controls the recording function and our press switch controls our playback function. And then the output of our recording IC is fed through our NPN transistors base which then controls our speaker and gives us our audio output. And we are using a regular diode which is D3, not our LEDs, or light emitting diodes like D1 and D2, so that there's only one path of current input for this, so that there is no reverse potential on here, otherwise our speaker would not produce any sound. So if we use our switch here, we'll get a little beep. It'll wait eight seconds, and then it'll beep again, telling us the recording is done. So I will do it here, and I'll just blow into the microphone and make some wind noise for it to save. So that first beep indicated it started recording, I blew into the microphone, it took that data, stored it in the RAM, and then it beeped again to tell me that the storage was full, and then I turned the slide switch off. So now when I press the press switch here, we should hear the wind noise from me blowing into the microphone, and then the recording I see will play one of three built-in songs that's also stored on the IC chip. So, you heard the, the blowing wind noise I made, and then now it's playing one of the built-in songs. And then you can stop it when you press the press switch, and then you can play it again along with a different song if you press it again. So now it's playing song number two. And now that's song number three. Now the songs are not affected by taking power off the recording IC. That's stored in flash memory on the recording IC itself. But your actual voice or whatever you it senses on the microphone there gets stored in a separate RAM chip, which again is volatile memory. So when we take the power away, we will lose that. So that is how... Project 308 is now Project 309. We're going to start modifying the circuit a little bit. It's playing music. Now that is not really any different from what we were doing. Basically, we're just going to use the slide switch to clear the RAM out and have it directly play the music built in on the IC. So we turn it on. Of course, it actually has my voice saved, so let me show you. I'll just take the power away. Put the power back on. Yeah, okay, I guess I didn't take the power off long enough. But you get the idea. It's basically just having us play the three different music tunes like I already showed you in Project 308. So... That's pretty much all Project 309 is. Now, Project 310 is light controlled music. So, with that, we're going to take away our press switch and use the photoresistor. But let me see if I can clear that audio first. Okay, now it's clear. 
So I just operate the first switch. So I'm going to take this away. And I believe that correct that goes where the press switch goes. Now let me cover it up. It will probably start playing a song as soon as I put this on. Okay, no it's not. But there you go. I took my finger away and now some light got into it, so now it's playing a song. If I cover it back up and let light again, it stops. completely. And there you go. So it basically fills in the place of the press switch being able to control the playback function of the recording I see by covering it up and then letting light in to trigger the recording I see's playback function. So that is Project 310. Now Project 311 is touch controlled music. And for that we're replacing the playback switch again, but this time we're using our PNP transistor as our touch sensitive switch. So we'll put it there. And then what we're going to do is because the PNP transistor, like the NPN, can amplify signals, and so we're going to use our own body to act as the connection point for triggering the playback function of the recording I see with our PNP, so we'll just touch our bass and touch the ground. And by doing that, we're able to get enough of the PNP transistor to turn on and connect ground here and essentially trigger the recording I see's playback function. I can stop it. Play it again. And frame a little more. So that's pretty much it for Project 311. Now we're going to move on to Project 312 through 315, which is going to be the same thing, but this time we're going to have the power amplifier in there, so it's going to be louder. So here we are with Project 312, which is the power amplified playing music. And there's a circuit in here, it is on the board. And it's pretty much just like the last set of projects we did with the power amplifier, but I mean with the recording I see, but this time, instead of using the NPN transistor for the controlled output, it's being fed through our power amplifier into the speaker, thereby allowing both the recorded audio that we have and the built-in music to play more loudly. So, so we'll do what we did before, where we make a recording. I'll just blow into the microphone there. I should also mention our red LED here. It's acting as another diode for our power amplifier but it's not really going to light it's really just being used for diode function so let me do a quick recording so as before we got our little beep indicator for eight seconds made wind noise into the microphone and then it's saved it on there so we should hear it when we play it back but with the power amplifier it should be much more audible because of the power amplifier. So the recording I made was louder and of course the built-in music you hear is also playing louder. And just like before we can use the press switch to start and stop the playback. Again, it will cycle through the three songs as we do it.
So it's pretty much how Project 312 is, pretty much the same as Project 308, but we got the power amplifier there instead of the NPN transistor. And Project 313, power playback and record, pretty much the same thing. So we just clear that out, and we just got our same music choices that we can go through which you've heard before already. Again, they're just amplified. So Project 314 is the power light controlled music. So like before, we take our press switch away and we're gonna use our photoresistor to control it. So light was coming in and triggered that. And when I cover it up and let light back in, it triggered the playback again, telling it to stop. Do it again. So that's how Project 314 is. And of course, 315 is once again the touch control. So let me run back and grab the PNP transistor for that. Then take our PNP transistor, put it on like before. And of course just like the project with the NPN transistor output, we just ground the base out with our fingers and that acts as the trigger. So again, just like the previous projects, but this time with the power amplifier. So that's project 315. And the last one we're gonna look at in this video, again, is the FM radio, but this time without the volume control with the variable resistor. So with project 316, we've got the FM radio. And there it is in the book, and here it is on the board, and it's Pretty similar to the previous project with the FM radio where it had the adjustable volume because we used the variable resistor. This time it's been omitted so it's directly driving the power amplifier. So we basically have no volume control but it functions pretty much the same. So again, we'll turn it on, we'll go searching for a station, and as we do it we'll try to find a commercial break or a talk station because again of the YouTube algorithm not liking music, so let's go. So again, no volume control, so the output is stationary. So let's start going through the channels. Okay, well, we managed to find a talk station after resetting it. So, you can hear that the FM radio is working, but again, the volume is loud because we have no control of that. So that's project. 316, and that concludes this first set of Snap Circuits videos for the SC500 system.